Hi, I'm Harper. Guys, we owe some of our viewers an apology. Every week we come here and we cook a lot of meat, a lot of cheese, plenty of eggs, gluten, and carbs. Oh, those carbs. We know that we have a lot of viewers who either follow an alternative diet or have some food restrictions that prevents them from eating a lot of the food that we normally cook. So today we would like to remedy some of the injustices we have committed and help out our friends in that situation. So my challenge for you today, Ava, is to cook an entire meal of classic Italian food but where each dish satisfies at least the requirements of one of the most sort of popular diets or dietary restrictions that we hear from the most. Harper, I think that I can do something about that. But here's the further challenge, and this is why you should stick around even if you aren't, for instance, vegan, because the criteria has to be that the dishes are absolutely delicious, not just if you follow that diet, but also if you're an everything Tarian like me. Challenge accepted, and I think that I can win also this one. I think we should begin with the folks who have probably been gypped the most by us because it's hard to think of a meal that we do that doesn't involve meat and or cheese and or eggs. Let's help the vegans out. No meat. No, that's vegetarians. Vegans, which means no animal products of any kind. So you can't use any Parmigiano, can't use any eggs, certainly no meat. Okay, I try to do my best. Okay. I don't even know what to say other than what the heck is this? Harper, this is uh, pane panelle. <laughs> pane panelle? Pane panelle, and, is the, and this is the traditional street food of Palermo. If you go to Palermo, you find the streets full of panelle. And panelle is uh, this uh, polenta of chickpeas flour uh, fried. So you have some on a sandwich mm -hmm. and some almost like french fries. The traditional one is that with the sandwich because mm -hmm. you walk in the street of Palermo and you eat this sandwich. This is a cool way in which you can present this dish. They are made with chickpea, flour, water, salt, black pepper, some parsley, and then fried. So it's completely vegan. But are they completely delicious? That's the question. Try and then tell me. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. I would be vegan if I could eat these every day. <laughs> they are more than delicious. With the chickpea flour, it tastes very similar to hummus. It's almost like hummus chips. And I love hummus. And I love chips. Now how about this rather glorious looking sandwich here? Please, uh, try it uh, and uh, give me With your pleasure. Judgment. That is awesome. That is an awesome sandwich. Sicilia knows something about food. Give me that. <laughs> give me that. They are amazing by themselves, but with the bread. <laughs> it has nothing less than a satisfied 
burger or a dog or anything else. I like this too because you made the like chips as sort of an, our antipasto, but you can also flesh it out into a bigger meal with the sandwich. So we've had our antipasto, which means it's time for the pasta. And because I feel like challenging you today, let's help out our gluten-free friends with our pasta dish. We cooked a lot of pasta and a lot of pizza, and all this stuff has a lot of gluten inside. So today we decided to test the gluten-free flour from Caputo. This is an ancient meal in Napoli, and because I used their normal flour several times, I trust them. So let's see if we can make a delicious pasta with this. The one thing that's sort of concerning about this gluten-free flour is that normally Caputo says on the package, it says, great for pizza, bread, and pasta. And they have mysteriously omitted pasta. It says for all your baking needs, pizzas, breads, baked goods, and more. But it seems weird that in this one case, they would just leave out pasta. I'm a little worried that there's a specific reason why pasta won't work with it, but let's find out. the gluten-free flour that, as you can see, it's very, very white, it's very, very thin. And one thing that we do usually in Italy when we work with the gluten-free flour is add some santam gum that uh, should help us to give the texture of the fake gluten that uh, this uh, flour hasn't. So let's see if it works. I use the, the normal ratio that I use when I make my pasta, which means 200 grams of flour and two eggs. But in this case, it doesn't seem to be right. So what I'm going to do is to use another egg and we will see what happens. So the problem that I have, and it's obvious, is that uh, the dough doesn't stick together because it, has, because it hasn't gluten. So what I'm going to, to do, I try to do, I will add a small amount of uh, butter. And it's pretty traditional in the Italian cuisine because there is some pasta made with some butter, so why not? I can feel that this dough is better than before. It's not pasta as we know it, but maybe it works. You look tall. I know, Harper, because... Harper! This is one of the more interesting baked pasta dishes I've ever seen. This is a plan B, Harper. The dough 
was uh, breaking, mm -hmm. so I couldn't make uh, the real pasta and boil it, so I decided to skip and do this roll stuffed with prosciutto and mozzarella and bake them. Now they are good, I hope so. <laughs> Well, it may not be exactly the plate of pasta we envisioned. It is gluten-free. Let's see if it's yummy. So, Harper, buon appetito. Buon appetito. They are yummy. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> they are yummy. It's definitely a different texture than you would have if it was pasta. It's a bit different, but it doesn't like taste weird or no. funky at all. It tastes really good. The texture is good, the pasta didn't break. Well, we'll have to do some more testing with that flour because I am curious if maybe there's some way we can come up with a real plate of pasta. But in the meantime, for our gluten-free friends who want to check this stuff out, uh, we'll put a link to the flour in the description below where you can get it. And that is a pretty good pseudo pasta dish that you can make that's totally gluten-free. If I can suggest that they can use also this dough to make, for example, lasagna, because mm. at the end, the idea is the same. Yeah. They can also make, for example, manicotti, mm -hmm. cannelloni. Yeah, they so can... bigger sheets are kind of easier to work with with this dough. To my, for my experience, uh, yes. Maybe if someone uh, knows how to work better with it, uh, can give also a small trick to make it easier. But also like that, or in a lasagna, or in a cannellone. Why not? <laughs> so we've had our vegan antipasto, our gluten-free first course pasta. Now it's time for our second course. How about we do this one for our keto friends? I think this is the first time I've ever seen someone cook an entire chicken in a pan. This is what we call in Italy pollo alla diavola. Does that mean devil's chicken? Yes, but it means uh, devil because it's a spicy chicken. I have been known to like my chicken, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be an acceptable dish according to my criteria. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Yep, that passes. It's a good way to cook chicken if you don't want to bake it also because uh, you can do this uh, in a pan as we did or you can also grill it to seasoning with uh, the spicy pepper. Well, I've, I've, I've noticed that I think even here the cutting open of the chicken, spatch cocking it we call it, is catching on also for baked chicken because I think it helps to like evenly cook it. I love the seasoning. I love how spicy it is. Well, assuming that they all didn't click off when you cut this bird in half, flattened it out with a hammer, slapped it in a pan, <laughs> uh, flipped it around a couple times, uh, we should probably do something for the vegetarians. I have uh, an idea what we can make for them, to make them happy and comes back.
eggplant meatballs. Eggplant meatballs are there. <laughs> this is one of the traditional dishes in Calabria. In Calabria we are also famous, not just for andouille, sausages, blah, 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 but also for our eggplant meatball. And I have a very funny story about this uh, meatball. So one day it was summer, on a plate we had 26. Mm -hmm. I have a cousin, Francesco, who didn't like at the time eggplants. So he came back from the beach and he saw this giant plate. So he started to eat one, and the second, and the third. He arrived at the 25th eggplants and then I said, Okay, Francesco, do you know what? You're eating uh, eggplant meatball. He looked at the meatball and said, ah, that's why I didn't like them. <laughs> this uh, is an example on how good they are. Well, I'm someone who, thanks to you, loves eggplants, and I love meatballs, so I'm definitely excited to try these. All right. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Once again, the eggplants coming in for the win as one of the most versatile vegetables I've ever experienced. They are so good that you can eat 20 feet of this. <laughs> when they're seasoned and cooked properly, eggplants have such a deep earthy flavor to them that it really does satisfy the sort of meatball craving you might have. When your mom fries meatballs, even normal meat meatballs, she'll flatten them like this. Why is that? Because Alper, in this way you have a more uh, surface, uh, so they are uh, crispier. Oh, then, uh, more, more fried surface area. Yeah. Mm. So the folks we hear from the most are vegans, see people who are gluten intolerant, maybe they have celiacs, maybe they just prefer not to eat gluten, uh, keto people, and vegetarians. And we've done a dish for each of those, but we still have some room for dessert, or at least I do. We need to give a recipe to all our friends who aren't vegan, who doesn't have any problem with gluten, who doesn't follow a keto diet, who, aren't, who are not vegetarian. So you're talking about a dessert that has animal products, Gluten, carbs, maybe even some meat. I think that I can do this. Cookies. See, Harper, there is meat inside. So here we go back to 1600s because uh, this uh, dessert, the name is um, Panatigi. It's a dialect name. This comes from, uh, came from Spain, where the Spaniards were occupying uh, south of Italy. Mm. And it was uh, a method to carry for a long time the meat, because this, this cookies last for a long time. Buon appetito! Buon appetito! Mmm! It's a very distinct flavor though, that sort of sweet meat mince. It's really good though. Well, that's our dessert submission for everyone else. <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed these recipes for food restrictions, alternative diets. I have to say, all of them were super delicious. So I would encourage everyone, even if you're not 
vegan or keto or whatever to give them a shot. If you do, tag us on social media, at Pasta Grammar. We'd love to see a picture of what you guys come up with. If you want to learn how to make your own pasta at home, check out our complete guide to homemade pasta. The link will be down in the description below, and we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao.